Washington, D.C. to see what fresh things they have going on. So, we're going to go in today and visit Mr. Colquitt's class. What led you to teach in English um, in the first place? So um, I have always had a strong passion, even when I was in high school, mm -hmm. um, I was like a nerd. Um, <laughs> and um, ever since I was little, like my parents instilled the value of education within me, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. When I got to 11th grade, Mr. Veal, my 11th grade um, AP English teacher, started telling me like, this is what you're going to do. Like I can already see it, I see certain qualities in you. Um, the more she told me that and reinforced that language, I started to believe in myself. When I got into college, I studied English literature. Um, and then I found that it came alive in a different way. Um, and I wanted to give my students that, that same experience. Um, literature has so many implications for our own lives, like the, um, the themes and the characters, their experiences. Um, I mean, they're all based off people. And I feel like if students can get engrossed in that, and truly understand that, um, then it can have a huge impact on the way they, they live their own lives. That's awesome. Okay, so the acronym FRESH, so this is the FRESH Classroom Channel. Okay. FRESH stands for Fun, Relevant, Engaging, Standards Based, and Higher Order. So it's five things that we really focus on trying to help teachers learn. Yeah. Um, so tell me, um, based on what I observed today, which one of those things are top priority when you plan your lessons and why? Okay, um, so I would say higher order. So I think that when, I was actually talking to a colleague about this the other day, when lessons are higher order, um, it just kind of takes care of everything else. So it takes care, it's automatically gonna be standard space. Um, it's automatically going to be fun for the students because they're challenged. Um, if it's higher order, it's gonna be relevant. It's gonna automatically encompass all of those, um, the, I don't say the things, the mm -hmm. words that the mm -hmm. acronym FRESH, FRESH stands for. So. My philosophy is that when children walk into my room, my students walk into my room, um, the more that I, I, I challenge them and the more I see them rising to the occasion, they're having a great time. Um, and the, I'm just looking, like our lesson say, the time goes by so fast because we're, um, we're so engrossed in it. They're, they're rising to the challenge and that's, that's, that, that's fun for them. Um, and then I also enjoy watching them learn and, and, and rise, rise to the challenges that we have set for them every day. Now when you're doing things and you're designing lessons and you're really focused on that scaffolding, you want to get them to the higher level of thinking, mm -hmm. responding, um, how do you, I feel like it's kind of a painful space, okay, because I was in English and my background is in English. So I felt like there was a painful space sometimes where like I'm asking something or I am requiring them to do something that's like really high level yeah. and there's like this point between me asking them mm -hmm. something and them getting up there to be able to respond. Right. So how do you deal with that space in your classroom? Yeah, so when I sit down and plan, um, I really have to take into consideration um, what my students need. And even though I'm really big on rigor when I'm planning, um, I also have to make sure that the rigor is divided to a point where it's um, meeting everyone at their own level of complexity. Mm -hmm. So what may be rigorous for one group of students, Students may not be rigorous for another group, um, and vice versa. So uh, a lot of modeling, uh, a lot of time for inquiry, and really teaching the students how to think critically about a text. Um, and like you said, it can be painful. It's not the easiest thing in the world. But there has to be days where students are deeply engrossed in critical thinking. They're interacting with the text, interacting with each other, and making meaning. Um, I find that when that happens a lot, when I do back away, um, and Backing away is painful. I don't know if you felt that way, but sometimes like releasing it, it kind of hurts because you don't want them to mess up. But that frustration, what I'm learning now is that that frustration and, and that that um, that that ability to like figure things out, that actually is learning. Mm -hmm. um, so I say that it's it lies in both. It lies on me to make sure that I'm teaching them and giving them what they need, um, the scaffolds that they need to like let them be independent and struggle. 
Um, and then also it depends on them to make sure that they're rising to that struggle and right. welcoming the struggle and the frustration of learning. Right. So how do you know what interests your students and how, um, how do you assess kind of what's going to resonate with them and making sure that what you're covering in class, whether it's the text you're selecting, the topics y'all are discussing, how do you um, how do you know what the interests of your students are? Yeah, so um, a few ways. One thing that I do on the very first day is that I give them a learning interest survey. So I ask them questions. Um, I find that the students are very open um, and they love to hear their voice heard. Um, so I ask them questions like, what was your favorite class? Who was your favorite teacher? What qualities or what activities did you all do with this teacher um, that constituted that class as your favorite? So when I go through and read their responses, they're very, very detailed as to what they want. The teacher that I love structured the classroom. They manage the classroom. Um, they put a lot of activities where we, can, where we can move around and a lot of visual activities. Um, so what I do is, is I take their, their, their feedback, um, I infuse that within my own planning and make sure that I have um, what they want. Also too, another thing that I do to make sure that they understand the relevance um, is kind of like about modeling. Um, and what I mean by that is they will believe and they will um, trust me as long as I believe it and I trust it myself. So if I'm modeling that this is important and I'm showing you how this is important and, and how this is applicable to things that you are facing now or you may face eventually, um, their buy-in goes from maybe 50% to so all the way at 100 because they're still, obviously, I mean, they're human. They're young, but they're human. And we all want to do things that are going to benefit us, um, whether it be in the classroom or outside the classroom. So definitely instilling the benefit mm -hmm. um, of what we're learning to not only their secondary success and post-secondary, but also to things that um, they actually go through in their own lives. Um, another thing I do is to have them discuss, like I really have them um, talk about something every day um, that's related to the text. Um, and then for outside, they find relevant issues that sort of match what's happening in the text. And that helps them see the relation between the classroom and then what happens in, in, in society. Yes, that's real life. Yeah. That's good. So what's your message to people that teach students like yours that say there's just no getting through to them because these kids just don't care? Yeah. Um, I would say if there's anyone that um, has adopted that way of thinking, that um, relationships are key. So building lasting, sturdy relationships with our students um, that are founded upon holding them accountable for their own learning, holding them accountable for their actions, um, developing a bond with them that goes outside the classroom, uh, and then showing them that they are not only academically supported, but you're there for them um, emotionally, um, and stressing those non-cognitive, excuse me, non-cognitive skills okay. through your teaching, making sure that you know perseverance is infused, showing them what it looks like to actually uh, persevere through a test or to be responsible. Um, we have to be a model for our students, um, and sometimes they feel that way because of past experiences. They don't tell us everything, um, but thinking to, especially with my students, they come with a lot. So trying to get into that, taking what they've been to into consideration, um, and then once again, establishing a very strong relationship with them from day one. Yes, that's, why that's awesome. All right, so the last thing I have is, I want you to give a shout out to the freshest teacher you ever had when you were a student, if you can oh, remember. Oh my goodness, okay. Can I do two? You can. Or just one, yes, okay. Sure. All right, I would say, um, have to give a shout out to high school. Miss Daly, Miss Kelly Daly, she was my honors freshman English teacher. And then Miss DeVille. Ella DeVille was my 11th grade AP literature, AP language and literature um, teacher. So those two together um, kind of built like a foundation of the love of English into me, love of literature, mm -hmm. love of writing. Um, and then especially as I got older, they still kept in touch with me and kind of like pushed me into my goals and supported me throughout. So that's awesome. Shout out to them. They're fresh. <laughs> the fresh teachers. Count. And, 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 I, and I just really wanted to um, sit down and have this conversation with you because I asked uh, one of your assistant principals, I said, hey, I'm going to be in D.C. I'd love to visit your campus. Um, I want to meet one of your fresh teachers. And let me tell you what that means. Um, and she said, oh, I have somebody that you <laughs> love to meet. And then she put me in contact with you. And, um, and I just really have enjoyed being here. This school, just if y'all are watching this and you don't know, is very rich in history and culture. Uh, we're sitting in their school museum where they have displayed all these artifacts and all this history about their campus. Okay, let me say this right. Y'all were the first school for African-American students in America. Yes, the first. Yes, so they take pride in that Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Yes. 
high school. And um, it's very rich here. And so we're so grateful that we were able to be here today. And we thank you for your willingness to get fresh in the classroom Absolutely. with your kids. It was a fresh opportunity. And I was <laughs> glad to have you all. It was my pleasure to host you all. So thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you. Special thanks to Mr. Colquitt and Dr. Avery Sewell at Paul Lawrence Dunbar in Washington, D.C. Fresh Chats with Steph is brought to you by thefreshclassroom.com. Are you ready to get fresh? If so, head on over.